So, uh, afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome, welcome to my our, our second uh, podcast and first musculoskeletal, you know, chat. And today, I'm delighted to be able to uh, uh, welcome uh, Ronnie Ward, uh, all the way from uh, sunny west of Ireland, uh, Galway, Galway City. Uh, mm-hmm. Ronnie's being a movement specialist, and uh, I've known Ronnie. How long have we known each other, Ronnie? Now, probably two long, two long, two long. Did you first look at my hip? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm bionic. I could hear you. I could hear you come up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's probably six eight years ago. Six years or more. So so, Roddy. So tell us, how are you? How's things in Galway? All good, man. All good. Just enjoying the good weather. It's um, yeah. Since the situation we're in. You know, it's good to it's good to talk to someone like yourself and and um, you know chat about things you want to talk about. So, but yeah, I suppose with usual podcasts, as I said, when someone contacts me about a podcast or something, I hate when people have a script. I like to hear a good conversation, a good chat. So people always start off when you know where, who am I? People don't know me. So my name is Ronnie Ward. Um, I'm at this. Um, business I suppose not that long maybe seven eight years but what brought me into it um, was one reason and one reason only it was like I was struggling with paying myself and um, from there and the work I was at I was I was a plumber and I just was not happy so I just woke up one day and went you know what I'm getting out of this um, so as I always say the decision was easy but the planning of it was the hard part and yeah, knowing but you, but you just did one day one one day mild mannered plumber next day you know pain and movement specialist no, like really? Hong Kong <laughs> this Imagine. is exactly this is exactly how it happened this this is true this is how quick I go I, I, I go I came home on a Thursday Thursday and I wasn't feeling well mentally and I never really down I was just not feeling well mentally and I went to bed with no kids at the time and my wife came home from work and I was in bed and she goes, what's wrong? And I says, I'm just fed up with plumbing. She goes, go at something else. And I says, I have no idea. So I, I had a buddy of mine down in um, Wexford, and he was a strength and conditioning coach. And I, he just happened to ring me about different types of training. And I told him, I said, look, I don't know what I'm at. And he goes, you know what you should go at? You should go at physical therapy. And I was like, really? And I was like, yeah. He goes, because you're always talking about the human body. You're always this. You're always reading books. And he goes, do neuromuscular therapy. So I was like, right, right, I'm hanging up. But look, on the, on the phone, neuromuscular therapy, NTC in Dublin. This is a Thursday. This is a Thursday. Uh, got the number, rang them, no answer. Friday, I was waiting for nine o'clock to come. Friday came, and I rang them, and I said, I'm looking to do a course. And she was like, where do you live, Galway? Oh, you, the course started three weeks ago, so you missed that. Right. I was like, where's the next course? She said, well, they're starting in Dublin tomorrow. I says, I'll be there. What time? And she was just like that. I was like, just like that. So I jumped in the van with radiators in the back of the, the back of the van, copper on the roof, drove up to Dublin, and I was sitting in the class. And I remember the guy was going through, I think it was a model of the scapula. And I'm looking at this going, I know what he's talking about. I know the muscles, what he's yeah, talking because, about. Yeah, because I mean, this wasn't just, uh, you know, you, 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 you know, t- tell everybody, you know, you you know, you you competed and 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 ran and you know in kettlebell. You know, so you're hiding your light under a bush. You know, you've competed internationally for Ireland. Yes. Yeah. Well, I did it. I I sound big, but it's not. Like I did do kettlebells for Ireland, but I'm I'm more into sprinting now. But but yeah. yeah but I've always done sports since I was. Of course, six of years course. You've always done gym. You've always been interested in nutrition, your body, the, the way things. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I, I know when it's time to change. And as I said. That's why I said at the beginning, the decision was easy, but the transformation was hard. I had five guys work for me. Um, and, you know, then I had to go into the whole world of, right, I'm going back reading a book. Now, this is coming from a guy who very rarely read a book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but once I got reading about the human anatomy, uh, the physiology, and so on, that was it. I was gone. Because the that, first time I met again met you then uh my anatomy knowledge compared to yours was abysmal abysmal 
completely. I mean, you know, I remember talking about the way nerves run, and you were like, well, it comes through here, and it goes there, and this thing. Yeah. Like, well, that was on the court. Yeah. Like, this guy has just, like, swallowed an anatomy. You're, you're encyclopedic knowledge. Yeah. For somebody who you say doesn't want to read a book or didn't like to read books. Yeah, it, it, it was, it's, it's like, you know, when you read something, you go, I read this before. You know, and, and but you have to bear in mind, like, as I said, I had lads working for me. At this stage, my, my wife uh, we, and myself, we had two very young kids. So I was getting up in the morning at 6 a.m. And I was doing two hours study before I went to work. I was mm -hmm. working. And then I would get home maybe half five. And I would study from, say, half five until I had to come to bed. So I would do that for six years solid. Boom, 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 boom. No. No, so look, you were doing this. This is why you were doing your training. While you were doing the neuromuscular training, and, and okay, th this is what I was doing when I was doing neuromuscular therapy, right? I was, I was. <laughs> everyone kind of goes, really? So this is why I hate when people use the word "I don't have time" or an excuse. This is, this is me. This is me. So I was plumbing. I had, I think, at that time, I had four guys. I was a very successful uh, plumber. Very. And this successful. was in Ireland. Was this was in Ireland was booming, isn't it? This was when Ireland was booming, but then it came into the recession. So 2000 and, um, 2008, 2010, whatever, they were, they were people's worst years, but they were my busiest years because I was going up, 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 up. So because people were dropping off left, right, and center, plumbers. But no, no, Ronnie was flat to the mat. Um, it was crazy. But when I was studying for this, I had, as I said, uh, 2012 was when it really kicked off. Two, two young kids with my wife. Um, I was studying for NTC, the National Training Center. Mm -hmm. I was over and back, over and back with Tom Myers to, to be a kinesis myofascial integration, over and back to the States. And, okay. and on top of that, I was sitting in the paper, I was sitting in the van one day and I turned pages. It was like personal training course. Oh, all right. I always wanted to do that. Rang them up. And again, it's funny, like, when do you start? Tomorrow, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, hung up the phone, went in. So I was doing neuromuscular therapy, KMI, and personal training in the one go. And yet, yeah, and yet, I was in, I remember being in the personal training course, and a few of the, the younger girls, I was the older person, I think I was 33 at the time or 34. Yep. And um, they were saying, I don't know, I haven't got time to do the, to, to do the, 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 the homework they were given. I'm like, going, really? Really like, come on. <laughs> but personal training course for me was just a tick in the box. It did. It didn't. Um, did I learn anything? I had an amazing tutor, Alan Murphy, and he's now a good friend of mine. But um, it was no, It wasn't stressful in any way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, that's wow. kind of my little journey to where yes. I am now. But I think a lot of that was because you found it absolutely fascinating. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I still do. I still do. I. I, I, I just, when, when people say to me at work, I'd say you, I don't know how many times people say to me a week, I'd say you like what you do because, and you'll hear it in my voice, I go, I go right up and even now I get excited and blah, blah. but that's just, people say it's passion, but, but yeah, because I, I, when you find something, it's, that's it, you're done. So especially find, if you it, find your purpose, it, it's not work. Exactly. Yeah. That, that whole saying, and, and that holds true, but. I came from something from plumbing. I loved plumbing the first 10, 11 years. Then I did 15 years and it just was, in my world, it was poison. So I came from, from that to where I am now. And now I don't work. I just don't work. I just turn up and, uh, well, like, we don't work now anyway. Cause it's, it's the magic thing, but, the yeah. Magic and, yeah. But it's just, it's just brilliant. You meet people, uh, most of the time they're, they're really nice people. And other times, you know, you, you get the mixture, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting, as you say, because, I mean, you know, you, you certainly don't work like a lot of people who, you don't work, you don't call yourself this because you've got this bit of a qualification of paper and that's what you're, that's what you do. Yeah. I mean, you, you've taken lots of different pieces and like morphed like a lot of very successful, what works for you in your own stage of, 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 the, of the journey. Well, you can say that, but I look at it differently. I was like, what works for the client? That's the way I think. Yes. It's not one. And that's the big thing that, that 
uh, I think a lot of therapists and, and even myself, like when I finished the last course, I think it was about a year and a half ago or two years or whatever, um, I really had to say, right, how do I develop all that I've done? And I've done a lot of stuff. I've spent over 100,000 euros on courses. I've done a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, right, in comes Mary, she's 52. In comes John, she's 22. Do I use the same protocol all the time? Okay, let's try that. And that's why I got bored of KMI because KMI, which is a 12 series session, so you do either you can do a three series or a 12 series. It depends what you want to do. But I did a year of that, and you know, I was like, going, is that it? Is that, is that is that all we're supposed to do? Okay. Then this brain of mine was getting very uh I won't say bored, but it was like going, right, what's next? What's next? What's next? Um, and then I went back over to the States studying the nerve stuff, nerve and artery stuff with an amazing lady, Kirsten Schumacher. Yeah, because I, I remember again, I mean, because I did a training. Cause so the, when I went to first see you in Galway, I piggybacked my, my, my hip appointment onto the Friday. And then I had the training with you on the, uh, on the, on the, Sunday, on the Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I can't remember what the technical term was it, but you were you were tapping nerves and 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 tell us about that. Um, well, you see, for first was thing, like, I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, this guy is either it completely blew my mind. Oh yeah, you know, or, you, or, could, you, you could you could go on, could tell them, tell everybody about the. <laughs> you wake up. You talk about grumpy, grumpy, is Crank, cranky. 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 I love, I, I, I love the word cranky because, again, if you look, if you open up any physiotherapeutic book or anything, even your school of thought, there's all these words for certain conditions and mm -hmm. everything going on. And then as a therapist, you have to remember all these words. And, you know, even like a grade one, grade two or a grade three. Now, look at the distinction. Look at, look at what all those mean. It's like, and then someone told me there's actually more grades. It's like, okay, but like, what, what does that tell me about, you know, what happened or what's happening? And, and I always find that people forget about the, the main driver of the bus, which is our nervous system, our brain. Yeah. And then our 72 kilometers of nerves in the body. 72. And people. People totally forget about that, and that just blows my mind. And that's when, like, I remember reading um, uh, John, 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 John Pierre Burrell's book, Burrell, yeah, Burrell's book on, on nerves. And it was one of the first books. There's not many books out there on nerves. But I read that book over and over and over. And I traveled over to the States, and there was a, a lady in the class, there was two of them, but one of them she was teaching. And I started talking to her about nerves, and she, she looked at me, and she goes, how do you know about nerves? And I go, well, I read the book. She goes, you have to come down to my house and you have to work on my leg. So I said, sure, yeah, I went down anyway. And I started working on her leg. And she was like, how do you know all this? I go, well, I read it in the book. And she goes, like, I'm 32 years doing structural integration. and No one has ever done this. And she, she done a lot of nerve work herself. And she goes, no one, and she lets no one work on her. Or she, Lord of mercy on her, she's dead now. But I worked on her leg. And then I was into the class the next day, and then the other teacher was like, did you work on Annie's leg with nerves? I was like, yeah. She was like, you have to come down and show me. And then that's how the nerve work set off. But yeah, it, 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 it's like a typical example of nerves for me is, you know, the people's complaints and, and so on. But, you know, you hear people saying, oh, I've done my hamstring. I go, are you sure? I always ask, are you sure? You know, and they go, yeah. And I go, how do you know? But a lot of the times, there's a nerve at the back of the hamstring. It's called the PFC, so the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. Now, it's a branch of the sciatica nerve. It's a, now, listen to what I said. It's a branch of the sciatica nerve, but it's not the sciatica nerve. Okay. You with me? Yes, now, yes, yes. In comes Martin. He's 60 years of age, and he was at the doctor, and the doctor told him he's sciatica. So I check out his leg, and I go, good news is it's not sciatica. No, no, the doctor told me it was sciatica. And I go, okay, it's... Must be right. <laughs> yeah, well, you, know, you get into all that conversation where it's like, okay, now, I don't want to really uh, insult this doctor or insult this guy's beliefs and, 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 and uh, respect for his doctor. Like, I would love to just say, look, your doctor really hasn't got a clue. 
it's not the sciatica, it's the PFC nerve, and I'll show it. So I start moving the nerve and I find it, and they go, what's that? And I go, that's your nerve. Work on his nerve. Might take one or two sessions, whatever, you do other stuff. And he walks around, and you're like, he's like going, that's different. But the touch is really soft. That's what got you, because you're used to and I love all that for the foot. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to because coming from more, more, more manual and, and my journey yeah. with foot mobilization and, and hands on. And it was like, you know, it was all about freeing up restrictions and getting them, you know, and, 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 you know, putting force through. And I mean, from the whole sort of physiotherapy side of thing, you know, again, you said grading, you know, is it mulligan or whatever on spinal? It's grade one, grade two, grade. Yeah. And I remember a physio mate, Toby, coming back from a spinal surgery thing. And he was like, Dude, do you know how deeply when when he, when he saw it in on, on, on real life surgery, he was like, you know, if I'm pushing a grade two, I'm doing nothing. Mm. You know, it's like and you know, it was because the anatomy, and I mean I, I, a few years back, because we, we were lucky enough when I trained, uh, uh, we had an anatomy every week and we had our own leg. Can't remember what it was called. Right. But Again, young students didn't have a clue what we were looking at or doing. We were just cutting bits and things, and we had the leg for the whole year, and it was, you know, it was great. But it wasn't until actually, and it was in Galway again, about about seven or eight years ago, when we actually got there was a cadaver course on, and like, you know, with the knowledge that I had, we well, knew a bit more then, going in and yeah, seeing absolutely. fascial layers and, and and in the actual, and you know, it, it was just absolutely amazing to uh, to, to to actually see it again. You yeah. definitely. You know, anybody ever gets a chance, you know, and you think they don't, you know, it's just refresh it. And with, with, with what, what you've learned since, you actually, you know, how, how tightly bound it is and how could, and, and oh, the apartments yeah. and stuff is uh, fascinating. Well, and that's the thing, but again, you're, you're in the cadaver course and they go, cut that skin, rip it open. And it's like, what do you have to do? And you're missing the skin. The skin is the, what, the biggest organism in the body. Once you touch the skin, you touch the brain. And within all that skin, just beneath it, are all the cutaneous nerves. It's mm -hmm. like, wow, <clears throat> you forgot about all them. Now you're going into muscles and bigger nerves. It's like, let's just backtrack yeah. a small bit. You know, let's just yeah. see what well, I, so, so, you know, I, I, I would have been trying to, you know, what, whatever ligaments and joint capsule stuff. But if I'm doing that through the cutaneous skin, I'm having an effect on the CNS there. Absolutely. No, no. No matter what, remember the day I said to you, if you give someone a hug, you, you, you affect their nervous system. I think that got you a small bit. Ronnie's, Ronnie's the hugger. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but like, think of it this way. This is how I view things. Right? I view things very simply. There's chiropractors, there's osteopaths, there's acupuncturists, there's physical therapists, there's recce, there's this, there's that. There's you, you, you name it. We can be here for the next 10 minutes talking. Yeah. What do they all have in common? What does all of those have in common? What would you say it is? It's one word. What's it called? What do they provide? Stimulus. There you go. You're learning. <laughs> so the stimulus. Now, why do we as therapists go off and do all of these fancy courses and everything? Because we have different people coming into us different days, and some of them require different stimuluses. Some of them just require a bit of a chat and a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Some of them require a hug, <laughs> or some of them require some mobilization. So, if you believe, first of all, and then it goes back into okay, and you said there, surely if, you know, surely if, if I manipulate the foot, or surely if, if I manipulate, the question is, how do you know? And you can say to me, I'm at this 30 years, and I go, brilliant, but I'm, I'm not saying you're right or I'm wrong or vice versa. But there's just the questions that I just always ask. Mm -hmm. But what I do know for certain is, if I touch the skin, I'm touching the skin. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Now, don't get me wrong. I've, I could work on the skin. I always work what I call clear the nerves first. I check the nerves, check the skin. If there's nothing going on there, I'm, I'm getting in. I'm, I'm working in soft tissue-wise. I'm checking ligaments, you know, as best I know it. And then I'm checking out the system and is there something in the tissues or is there something bigger, as I call it, coming from the psychological mm -hmm. side down. And, yeah. um, but the key thing to remember is, you know, for, there might be up and coming therapists there is you are a stimulus provider 
And it's up to you as a therapist to know and to understand, one, that that's correct. But if you give that stimulus into that nervous system, is it what they need and is it what they want right there, right then? Mm -hmm. Or, let me give you another example. You do 15 manipulations on a foot and the client is feeling okay. He leaves it. He hops in the car and he sits in the car and miss call and it's his lawyer and our solicitor and says, that deal came through. You're after getting 1.2 million. <laughs> and you're, a load of good news comes in. And you text him in two days' time. And you go, <laughs> how was the foot? And he goes, oh, man, my foot is just <laughs> incredible. And you go, no, worries. that's not a good client. But he the never, magic happens working again. <laughs> he, he never tells you that he got 1.2 million. Now, same client, you give the adjustment. He leaves in the exact same way. He sits in the car. He looks at his phone, solicitor, you owe 1.2 million. You're now bankrupt. Oh, and then his wife rings him and his wife says that the dog died. And now you ring him in two, three days time and you go, how's your foot? Oh, it's worse. <laughs> so do you, and, and he's blaming you for his bad foot because he's after giving you X amount of money. Uh, and you're like going, wow, geez, I did, all, hold on, I did all the manipulations. I did this, I did that. So the stimulus you gave was probably okay, but the stimulus he got when he hopped in the car far outweighed all of the stimuluses you gave. So it, was, it, was, it, it wasn't that it was pointless. It was just that that's the way the person is. <laughs> so Does that make there, sense? There's two things. I, yeah. One way for me to take this now, because I wanted to go back because I know and we've talked before and you've trained some of my guys here and the whole psychosocial words that you use and labels and things as well. But yeah. um, we are going to touch on that. But just into, uh, we're not going to go, our, our orthotics are an insert in a shoe or even footwear will provide a different stimulus. Absolutely. I, I, remember, I remember one course years ago absolutely fascinating as to if anybody knows what i'm talking about or is that the same thing again a biomechanics summer school it was a guy who only did a half hour presentation he worked with cerebral palsy kids yeah oh wow. and all, all hypertonicity and he yeah. used insoles with little lumps and dells and stuff to st and he Correct. before and after and it was just a, a simple insole with a with a little lump here and there and and the, the tonicity just dropped mm. Oh, well, how is that? So, yeah, and we've had discussions at length about orthotics and expensive bits of carbon fiber and the difference between just a wedge or a heel. Or, so is it, are they just putting a different stimulus impulse into it? Absolutely. Because the recent thing on the, one of the recent podcasts or one of the Northern Ireland group, really good evening talks, and one of the guys who owns one of the, the, uh, the, 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 the orthotic labs in Ireland, shout out to Martin McGill, is that uh, again there, how orthotics work are uh, 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 the what we do they're they're a load i think it was they come up now they're a load modulator is what they think they are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah uh, rather than they're actually realigning but then I, I talked to my friend wayne after and told him that and if i've misquoted him, martin I'll, I'll get pulled up I, i'll pull myself up wayne was like he just wayne thinks because I took the piss a couple of years ago on one of the sites and I was just like, listen, they're just an expensive heel raise and they help you move sagitly better. Just to stir the pot a little bit. And Wayne now thinks they, they just help to stabilize a little bit of first ray function. Yeah, okay. Like yeah. He happen. But then again, is it just providing a different input or stimulus into the foot? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, well, plus there's, there's lots going on. You know, first of all, in comes a client and he, he goes to your clinic and you're providing orthotics. Yeah? First, the first thing you have to do is you sell them him. You, know, you, have to, you have to convince them that these orthotics do A, B, C, and D, and E, and F, G. So now you're a salesman. So he's already convinced himself in his brain, <clears throat> okay, these things must be good. Okay? So now he puts them in his foot and he gets this sense of, why well, these are different. But I'm after paying 250 300 for them. Okay, they have to work. Mm -hmm. They must work, right? And you meet them and you go, how's the orthotics? But oh, they're, they're, they're uncomfortable. You know, they're, they're, they're a bit uncomfortable. And 
I see them, they bring them into me and they're like concrete. Um, I, but again, going back to, it's like which stimulus worked. The stimulus of the, 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 um, the therapist's words in, in the mm. selling of the product, the stimulus, mm -hmm. of the, the stimulus of the client who spent a lot of money on yeah. the session and on the orthotics or the orthotics. Or, 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 or what's just popped into my mind, maybe he's gone off and bought a new pair of shoes to put the new orthotics in. It was the shoes that made a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Like, or because I remember uh, after you too, after you did some work on me, first of all, you were like, "Get rid of those shoes," because oh, I yeah. was wearing them in, and they would have had a particular uh, pattern of, of 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 bend and flex in them and redirecting and stuff. And you were like, "Get rid of them if you're going to change." I think about well, my Miss Coton, no. no yeah, you were like, yeah, yeah. That's 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 what it was. So, yeah, there's. That's always that. That was always my journey. I've talked about this before. It was always like patient comes back in two week review, fingers crossed as they come in. Yeah, they're great. They're fantastic. Love them. Yeah. I don't, or, yeah. or else, oh shit. And one of the again, back to one of these courses, summer school things was uh, the doctor's guy say he knew there was a problem with the patient orthotics when he came into right. the practice on Monday morning and the pair of orthotics were tied around a brick and had been thrown through his front window. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know your orthotics haven't worked. <laughs> yeah, I like, and, and this is me being bluntly honest. Uh, uh, you know, I spoke about orthotics, and, and you know, yeah. there, are, there are many people out there who, who got benefit from orthotics, but yeah, the definitely. people who I, the, the, you know, the, and they have to because they're being used every day, you know. Mm -hmm. But, we, you know, when you tell someone, you know, uh, when they ask you their orthotics or what you think of them, and I go, Okay, this is what I think, and blah blah blah. And I, I always give the comparison of, of, of the hand. Can you see my hand there, right? Yep. So my hand, same amount of bones and joints in my hand as I do in the foot. Okay, it's very simple anatomy. So I'm able to close, I'm able to open. I want my my hand to move. Okay. I have an orthotic. I put the orthotic on my hand. I now cannot move my hand. Mm -hmm. So I just so the, the orthotic is restricting the movement in my hand. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ask the client, is that what you want the orthotic to do to your foot? And usually there and then they go, well, what do I, or they say, well, what, what do you suggest? Movement. I suggest movement. Mm -hmm. So let's remove the orthotics so your foot can move and then move away from the orthotics. And yeah. Nearly, yeah, a colleague recently in Australia said he, 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 he made his own orthotics and orthotic, or had his own in-house orthotic milling stuff and wore orthotics himself for years. And uh, there was always that sort of thing. It was, you know, they had those patients who could never live without them. And he thought he was like that himself. But then he's, yeah. he's gone back to Muay Thai martial arts now. Okay. When he first started, he was like, Oh, shit, I'm not going to be able to wear my orthotics to do that. I mean, you know, he was worried himself and like, yeah. how is he going to do that? But again, then, we're obviously barefoot and it's strengthened now and said, so his feet have never been in better condition apart from all the, 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 the crook toes he's getting now from kicking people in the side of the head and stuff. But yeah. like, look, look, at, look at it this way. Sorry to cut in you there. If no, you're, no. Out, you're, you're out for your walk there this evening or whatever the weekend and you see there's a load of people out running. You'll see so many people wearing knee braces. You'll see them in the GA pitch yeah, wearing yeah, knee braces. Yeah. And, and you just say, why do, why do you need that? What's, what's going on with that? Oh, I have a bad knee. Mm -hmm. It's like, who, who told you your knee's bad? Well, five, six years ago, I came down and, and if I don't have that brace on, I won't play well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now is it, it, it's, it's unethical for me to say, just take that off. You don't need that. You have to educate them why or what might be going on, both psychologically and socially. And then, you know, explain to them that you have a bit of an over-dependence on this thing. Um, mm -hmm. It might be restricting you and running fast. They go, what about <coughs> removing it? Like I, I remember one guy, he, he wouldn't take it off. And I go, okay, put it in the back of your shorts. Where, in the game, if you need it, put it on. So he okay. got the first half and he put it on the second half. So he did half and half. And he came back about six months later and I had forgot all about the brace. And he goes, I'm not wearing the brace. And I was like, oh, yeah, the brace. It was like, I couldn't believe it. He said, it was, when I was playing the game, my brain was saying, like, put it on, put it on, put it on, put it on. And I was like, but he, he had, like, like, your, like your buddy there, you, you get an over-dependency on something. And, mm -hmm. you know, as I, as I said at the start, you know, it's like, just ask why. What's, what's it for? What are you getting from it? Is mm -hmm. it a stimulant? 
And usually yeah. when, when our brains get used to the same stimulus over and over when you, when, you, when you repeat it over and over again. So then you're looking for something else. So it's like, okay, I get something else. But then we become dependent on something. And yeah. that can lead into other negative psychological issues going mm -hmm. forward, especially for an athlete, you know, especially yeah. for an athlete. But like, take, take one, one last thing about the orthotics. Like I, I got into... Kind of spelling, um, anybody, anybody wants to contact me and find out about Ronnie and find out where he is so you can go round. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my like I, I'm going to love this and all the physios out there who have orthotic based practices. And again, it's yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's nothing like I have given. I have given people um, uh, recommendations to go get orthotics because <laughs> I feel the need. But I'm not. I'm not, not yeah. like the, I'm not against anything. Trust me. You know? <laughs> If you told me you hit someone over the head and it works, I'd be like, brilliant. Do it again and see if it's working with someone else. I yeah. always question everything. But like, I, I started bringing in carbon fiber uh, insoles, you know, yes. uh, and uh, people would say to me, how did it work? My answer was always the same. I don't know. So they were like, but, but, but what do you mean? Because I felt if I started telling them what was going to happen, what I felt or whatever, I was the worst salesman ever. But yet they kept selling and they kept... I kept having to order them in, order them in, and there's not mm -hmm. many. I think maybe two or three people, and maybe I'd say we're about 150 pairs out, and people love them. They love them. And they're just a flat carbon plate inside. Well, well, very flat carbon. It's 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 they're paper thin. Um, is there there's any something... flex in them? The what? Is there any flex in them? Yeah, the new ones we have. Well, it's not me. It's my my buddy Darian Barbrings. Uh, he he sells them to me. But the new yeah. ones now, they're, 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 they move with the foot because uh, as anyone might know, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, and fiber is very brittle. Mm -hmm. So especially, I'm a sprinter, so I wear them in spikes and they crack. So we were a long time trying to figure out how to not let them crack. But carbon fiber, I mean carbon fiber, if it does crack, just put one end of the top of the shoe, drop down a bit below the transverse arch and put the other bit there, glue it in and you're way to go. It lasts for ages. You know, it's, 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 it's mm -hmm. and they're cheap. They're 40 euros. Uh, but my point is that stimulus, that stimulus worked on so many people. I'm talking like guys who were elite 5K runners knocking 20, 30 seconds off their times. And I said nothing. I said no. I, I wanted to see. It's a big experiment for me because I don't want my words to influence their, their output. You know? Yes. And they would text me going, wow, these things are just incredible. I'm noticing this, this, and this. I go, okay, cool. That's it. No more, no less. We must yes. sell it. I didn't sell it, and so my yes. point is, it's a stimulus. It's still a stimulus. You know? Yes, and again, so let's you know, yeah. So words are a stimulus. Oh but yeah. Delivery, tone of delivery is a stimulus. Well, yeah. It, it, when you, especially when you're dealing with someone in chronic pain, you know, and with me, first of all, the the first stimulus is me. I'm six foot three, you know, and you're you're tall as well. And if I come at someone, you know, I, I've often said, am I okay in this space? Because number one, I don't know what has been going on or had been going on in their life. Maybe yeah. I'm, I'm too close, but the presence of me is too close. Um, so yeah, I have to check in with that, especially because as I said, you just don't know. But yeah, how you present yourself, you know, even from just opening up the door, you know, do they put out their hand first? Do they, do they might want to shake your hand? You know, um, especially now in these especially situations. now, yeah. Well, forget about now. I'm talking about in the real yeah, world. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's 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 kicking off immediately. But you know, and usually I just sit down and I welcome them and I go. I always kind of say the words, "How can I help you today?" I make sure I say, "How can I help you today?" Mm -hmm. Because they could come in with fifty things going on. And they yes. might shout out, they might shout out 50 things. And I go, right, we have 50 minutes left. What would you like to work on today? Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll work on that with them. But generally in the intake, for me, it's, it's the words, it's how they're describing what's going on. That's where I really pick what I need to do. In other words, what's I think you, you've talked about before. You've got to meet them where they are. Oh, yeah. Every day. Every day, yeah, yeah, a, a, absolutely. It's like I, I remember one lady. She was I had her for like three or four sessions, and on the fifth session, this is spread over a couple of months, and she came in and she was white as a ghost. 
and she sat down and I said, are you okay? And she was like, yeah. I was like, hold on a second, stop. There's something wrong. And she uh-huh. had a massive argument with her husband, you know, and he was kind of very aggressive to her. And I was like, we're just going to cancel the session. No, no, I need to do this. And I said, no, no, we're not doing it. So she went from being really lively, bubbly, chatty, you know, listening to, mm-hmm. you know, dead in herself. I said, look, forget about it, cancel it, and we'll talk again. Um, so again, you, you don't know what's going on in their lives. And mm-hmm. usually, usually, nearly all the time, people who have pain have a load of stuff going on in their lives. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's there it's there for reasons not for a reason they're for reasons mm-hmm. so yeah yeah and unpacking those reasons yeah that's 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 the beauty what i love about it it's like so again i listen to your chat and because i remember it, it, you're, you're you're like uh, you're like the, you know ron is the guy who's like the more chronic it is, the more thing, the more people are seeing, the more stuff the thing. You're just like, come on, that's yeah. But yeah. you see, that you know, remember, stuff. <laughs> but, but, but go back to what I told you. I was doing all these 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 courses at once. That's how my brain. I I I I'm I'm a novelty seeker. I that's why you said to me at the beginning or two days ago, what do you want to talk about? I said I don't have no agenda. Let's just talk. That that's the buzz in it. That's the buzz. So. And you're more honest that way. You're not, you're not, it's not a script. But in, in between that intake of words, you know, with that, I could be talking to someone for five minutes, 50 <laughs> minutes. I, I, to me, it doesn't make a difference um, because the talking is the stimulus. The listening is the stimulus. You know, and I have a whiteboard and I write up different words. and I, I might just write up mother. And I'll draw a circle around the mother and I'll go, where were we off? Where are we off this? And then people might say, listen to this, they might go, yeah, well, you're getting into areas you're not qualified in. Uh, I, I'm, I know my boundaries. That's why I, I, I write up on the board and I always tell them, look, if, is there something here? And she goes, yeah. And I go, right. You need to, whatever that is, you need to figure that out because maybe this is the stimulus for her. So that's causing, I suppose, havoc or pain within her internal environment. So mm-hmm. I always call them whole environments. So you have external environments, which is the world, world and internal environment, which is what's going on. Um, there's many environments. So she came into my environment, mm-hmm. which is my workplace, you know, and um, there's many environments. So, um, yeah, and, and it's within that. So, the, uh, uh, like, very typical is, is people who have a fear of movement. They have a fear of, of doing, you know, bending down. And, and the biggest one I had, on, I think it was about four or five times one week, was, was guys, and they're around 30 to 35, and they had young kids, but they had, they had bad backs, and they were afraid, they were afraid to pick up their child. You okay. know? Yeah, this is huge, like, this is it's huge. So I, I would say that to them, I'd go, what do you like picking up the, the kid? Oh, I can't. Oh, why? Because you know the way when you bend down, I go, yeah. And you're over the cot, yeah. I know the way the child is heavy. Child heavy, okay, yeah. And you go, like the back could snap. Snap. <laughs> so he's in about back pain. So what do I do? Do I get him up on the table and start rubbing his back, put needles in his back? Or do I bring him out to my little room that I do movement in? And do I get him moving? Do I try and highlight, uh, I suppose, he, he, his concerns? Because he's told mm-hmm. me, but highlight them and have a chat about them but then try and help them disprove that what he's saying is not correct mm-hmm. he can bend over he can move he can rotate how did you and get here little... today you got in and out mm-hmm. of the car and you put your socks on and you did this and that and the other and... this this is what i that they're they're all things that i call uh, big big pictures so as i anyone who suffers with and i was one of those who who, who suffers with chronic back pain I don't anymore, thankfully, but had it's it's like when you get up in the morning and you can put on your socks, you're gonna have a good day. Mm-hmm. Right. You're gonna have See. a good day. Uh-huh. And when you say that to someone who's in chronic pain, they go, Yeah, that's right. Because then you didn't know they go, Have you had back pain? Yeah, I was due for surgery when I was twenty two because of a pronated discs or are pronated. Oh, pronated. Yeah, pronated, yeah, I mean feet now and um all this kind of stuff and 
I went through all my 20s with, with pain, listening to this person, to that person, telling me this, telling me that. And mm. I remember just one day going, this is just before I gave up plum, and I was like, what they're saying makes no sense. Uh -huh. I was lifting, I was yeah. lifting weights yesterday in the gym, and now I can't walk. And yet, in a week's time, I'll be fine again. Oh, it's just your, your disc. It's like, really? But they didn't understand that psychologically, I was so stressed with plumbing. I was stressed to the max. <laughs> nuts, nuts, nuts. Uh -huh. Old money, making money, spending money, this, that. It was crazy, the stress I was under. But no one asked me that as a turk. Well, what kind of work do you do? Oh, I'm a plumber. Oh, I say you make a lot of money. Yeah, I, 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 I was, but you do not need to know what I work in 90 hours a week, you know? Yeah. No, no one asked me. No mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Crazy. And, and, and again, that whole, uh, you know, I, I never realized it. I've done a lot of work with chiropractors over the last number of years. You know, there, there's vitalistic chiropractors and mechanistic chiropractors. And you know, again, the vitalistic is, are you hydrating enough and you know, what are you eating right and enough sleep and the whole, yeah, that whole, that it's a whole, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that we, we don't take into consideration, you know, and, I, and again, back to, back to the, uh, back to, back, back to the, uh, you, you know, that's it, into the clinic, well, what's wrong with you, you know, that, 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 that GP you talked about that told the fella he had the sciatic, nothing against GP, uh, he didn't put him on the couch and examine him or anything. He just listened to the symptoms and diagnosed him and thing. He didn't put a hand on him, I would nearly guarantee. If you know that the, the true symptoms of sciatica you, 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 and you hear, you know, if someone can walk up my stairs in my place and, and how, how was the stairs? It wasn't bad. They don't have sciatica. Let me tell you right. something, because I've had sciatica. In, in the seven or eight years I'm at this, I've only met about six people with sciatica. Okay. Uh, no, nothing touches it. Nothing. No morphine. No drugs. No walk. No stretch. No nothing. It is vicious, vicious, right. vicious to the point where it doesn't go away. It stays with you. Uh, the sciatica nerve can be compressed anywhere, anywhere from the head, and I say because I treat all nerves the same from the head down to the big toe. Mm -hmm. So if the nerves, because remember, there's 72 kilometers of nerves. They're just named differently. They're, I mean, that's, they're, that's, that's from here to Dublin. From, from the what? You know, I live in our north of Dublin. Do, do, from here to the Dublin city centre is probably about 72 kilometres. Yeah. Or, or, you, yeah. or we're might be getting into South Dublin or heading out to, to Wicklow type of thing. I mean, that's... A, yeah, it's mad. It's, it's absolutely crazy. And then don't forget you have the arteries. The arteries in the body there's seven, are 500 kilometres of, of arteries. So the arteries as well. So the arteries and the nerves, I, I do just keep things really simple in my head. And They're, nerves debate the arteries as well, and you know, the whole. Yeah. Well, well, well mo most nerves have, have an artery, bar one or two, but most nerves have arteries running with them. They have to for blood supply. Yeah. That's why when you, wake up in the, when you wake up at night, your hand is all sleepy, and then you shake it off. So what's the shaking? The shaking is movement. You shake the hand off, what's gone now again? And you're yeah. gone. It was all that, is, that, is that popular tail fossa or I think it's somewhere up in the groin, I can't remember. You know, it's that VAN, VAN artery nerve, when you're learning your anatomy. Yes, yeah. yes. They all, they all run with each other. And Absolutely. So, so we have touched on it, but back into in the cycle. So, the, yeah, the label or the language that was used to describe mm. thing. And, you know, I still haven't got a handle on, on my explanation of when somebody just says, but sure, it's arthritis. And there's nothing they can do. Yeah, 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 yeah or, absolutely. Or, or we've talked before. I think it was an uncle or relation of yours said, "I, I, I snapped my hamstring." <laughs> or in half, he said to you, didn't he? Well, yeah. Well, let, let's just we'll, we'll put it, put things into context. First of all, there's 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 what most doctors and I stress the word most. Like if you are a doctor or a therapist that, that yeah, uses the psychosocial model. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not picking anyone. Trust me, I'm not that type of person. I really am. So you have the biomedical model, which deals with just the human body and it's separated up into all its uh, systems. So you have the nervous system, endocrine system. So that's the biomedical model. It's a lovely model for learning on the body. It's, it's, it's just that model. And then you have the biopsychosocial model. Now, this is around since 1977 or something. So it's not, it's not that it's new or anything. So pretty yes. much every person 
unless they just haven't heard about it, I'll take that for granted. But if you haven't and you're listening to this, then why haven't you? <laughs> you, you, you really should have, like, you know. But the biopsychosocial model <coughs> takes, the biomed takes the biomedical model and it adds on the psychological, which is your thoughts, your fears, your emotions. Now, notice I lower down my voice, explain this. Your emotions, your expectations, your past experiences, which is a big one. So past experiences is how, how was your past experience with Justin? I asked the client. He was absolutely amazing. Loved him. Or did you go to Jimmy down the road? Hated him. Hated mm -hmm. him. You know, did you get any results from him? Results. No, oh, how would I? He's useless. Justin is brilliant. Justin is brilliant. What did he do? Oh, I don't know what he did. So yeah. psychologically, they mm -hmm. appreciate you, they respect you, and so on. And then labels, as you were saying there, are, as I said, I don't really deal in labels, you know, arthritis, sciatica. That's why it's like I came up with the thing, cranky nerves. You know, you said mm -hmm. to a therapist, I said to a client, yeah, it's the nerves and it's cranky. Are, are you sure it's the nerves? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sore. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, but even if you have a ligament that's torn off the bone, guess what? The nerves are going to be involved as well. If you break a leg, guess what? The nerves are going to be involved as well. They have to because they're sending nociceptive information to the brain and to the spinal cord, spinal cord to the brain, brain back to the spinal cord, spinal cord to the leg. Boom, away you go. There are yeah. no pain. There are no pain pathways. There are no pain receptors. There's nothing like that. So people need to learn all that information because you tell someone, oh, the pain receptors. If some therapist says that, you, you're going to get the look off me. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about there? Pain what? And you read most, most anatomy books, they will talk about pain receptors. Pain, pain, gate, pain gate theory? Yeah, yeah, that's that's there, yeah, but that's just theory, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. which is the same as the which is the same as the biopsychosocial model. It's a theory, but for me, it's the it's the one of the most recognised and respected. But again, um, a theory or model, whatever you want to word, it's, it still holds very, very true. And what I like about it most is that therapists understand or clients understand it when you explain it to them. And then and then the last one, which is your social, which is what I call your work, home, and lifestyle. Now, remember I said to you, as soon as that therapist comes in the door, I don't know who she is or who he is, what he is going through, what he is being through. Yep. You know, I'll, I'll never forget this. Is, this is true. I'll never forget this man walked into my door, into my, and he, he was bent over, big man, 63 years of age. He sat, didn't say anything, just sat down in the chair. And I knew, well, there was something big coming. And he looked at me, you know, shaking. And he goes, uh, 52 years ago, my soul was taken from me from the priest. There's what you call biopsychosocial model in full flight. That man's life it, uh, has been nothing but torture since then. And, you know, he tried to commit suicide so many times. He, he was so nervous. I actually had to meet him at 8 o'clock in the morning because he didn't like the traffic. He thought someone was going to hit him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, now, people will completely, say... He had completely taken over every action every everything in his life yeah now yeah. you would say to me but that's outside your jurisdiction no i stayed within it but what i used i used the biopsychosocial model framework remember the biopsychosocial model is not therapy it's not a treatment it's the model i call it the model of life because mm -hmm. that's what it is. when you're meeting people every day you're dealing with their life you said it there earlier there's so much involved like water food yeah that's life you don't put water in or food in, you ain't living. Mm -hmm. But what you put in, and then how the system uses that on top of everything that's going on, you that's what you get presented with, which is AKA your client. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so if they come in with a sore foot, yes, it might just be the sore foot, or there might be a whole lot of things going on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but, um, if I can, I think, I think you were saying, going back to the words we use. So, yes. You have, or I have a client coming into me and they're stressed, they're worried, they're anxious, they're fear. They had an MRI done on something. The, the doctors told them they might need surgery or, or that, that, that. We'll go back, we'll use the story of, of my uh, wife's uncle. Mm -hmm. He comes to the, to, the, to, the, to the house. The one who snapped or, or tore in half yeah. his hamstring. Yeah, him. Yeah. 
and he's been coming in and I seen him Sunday and I've been listening to him for weeks and weeks and I wouldn't dare go near him because of the um the things what was going on. Um but we, we finally were in the house anyway and he walks in and I could see him, he was limping in, limping in. I said, How's the hip? Ah, oh, I have to get two hips done. Arthritis, the doctor said. I said, Arthritis, wow, okay. I said, Do you mind if I have a look at it? And he goes, Would you? I said, Yeah. So I got two masks, had a look, and I was assessing the hip my way. I was like, I don't think you have arthritis. Really? And I said, No, no, that. I go, I don't. But I just know from the feel, I've felt people before who have arthritic hips, you have movement, but you're, what your problem is, is you're not using your hip to the best of yeah. ability. So you're underusing. Now, this is a farmer, 73 years of age. He would often do 18 hours, 16 hours in the tractor. Mm -hmm. Very, and diet wouldn't be great. Living on tea, don't know. No, he doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, right? So there you go. But anyway, he goes, All right. So I showed him some things to do. I said, call over to the house tomorrow. So call over to the house and uh, assess his hip again. Big change in the hip. I said, how's the hip? And I was able to lift the hip. I was able to lift the leg into the car. I was like, any pain? No, oh, Jesus, no. I was like, okay. Well, I brought her the MRI report. I said, sound. Looked at the MRI report. Now, when I look at an MRI report, I look at two things. Cancer and tumor. After that, I just read and I look for the labels. So what it said was, it said osteophytes, you know, mm -hmm. little, 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 little thing. Yeah. And it said nothing, nothing of, of arthritis. So I, was, I read it again. I said, where, where is the arthritis? So not saying on that there, no. And I go, no. Jeez, the doctor told me I need, I have arthritic hips and I need two hip replacements. Mm -hmm. I said, number one, I told you last night. And number two, this MRI shows you just have things going on in the hip. But I said, let's get moving on that hip. Now, this guy couldn't lift his leg up four inches with pain, and he just physically couldn't lift it up. By just doing simple mobilization, but more importantly, educating them, this is what I think is going on. Let's challenge mm -hmm. it. How does it feel? Man, he could lift his leg up, right knee up to chest. He goes, Jesus, what's that about? And I go, if it's improved that much, what does that tell you? Jesus, I don't think I'm using it as much as I should. There mm -hmm. you go. So I gave him movement yeah. to do. He's coming back again, I think, tomorrow or the next day just to have a check, and, and, and that's it. It's, yeah. it's a classic yeah. example. Yes, scans. Yes, people come in, they're bringing in the scan, and they've waited months for the scan, and the scan, the scan, yeah. the scan, and the scan, yeah. you know, the scan's not the, <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah, I, I, I'll never forget, I had a woman not, not just before the lockdown, and she came in, and she did awful pain in her back for ages, and, and I was able to, I tested her, I don't know how, but I'm fairly good at, and I stress the word guessing at where the disc is, is actually damaged or, or given trouble. And I was able to tell her because when you move this way, you get a dart, you move that way and you open up the space, oh, I don't have pain. So I drew it out, it's a bang right there. And she texts me anyway, <laughs> about a week later, she goes, I got the MRI results back. And it says I have a bulging disc. And I just text her back, I know, I told you that three days ago. And she was like, did you? <laughs> <laughs> she, she just because she wanted to believe that there was something much bigger much more mm -hmm. catastrophic and she goes what's next and i go nothing just stick with what we said so mm -hmm. you're saying movement and this and that and i go yeah it's mm -hmm. fine what's going on it's sore but it's mm -hmm. fine it's it's, yeah. it's pretty normal you know yeah yeah okay. so yeah yeah well it's not sorry it's not retraining it's 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 you're yeah, accessing the movement that the body's been guarding against mm, absolutely so now first of all if it, if, if a client comes in to me and i just said to move no i'm not moving I'm, yeah. are you yeah. moving even like you know but if i sit them down have a listen have a chat get up my on the whiteboard explain a bit about you know protection explain a bit about pain explain a bit about fear now i put the context in place See, I have, I have all the content, but now I have the context, okay? Yes. So, and they have all their concepts. So they think it's this, <laughs> like my uncle-in-law, whatever, he said he has cancer. So I take all those, and I remember them in my <clears> head, <throat> and then I get the clients to challenge those. So I'm challenging those, their beliefs. I don't, and I, I said this on many podcasts before, I don't try and change your belief. I try <laughs> and challenge your beliefs through words and through mm -hmm. movement. 
So now he might say, I can't bend down and pick that up, I pick stuff off the ground. I haven't been able to do it in seven years. There is a challenge that I need to check, figure out. Now, maybe he can't. I don't know. But yep. 19 out of 10, they are. But what I did was beforehand, I might get them to do it and they're not able. And then I'll have a chat with them and then bring them back out again. I, I usually say stuff like, now knowing all you know, from when you come in the door to now, do you think you'd be able to do this? Well, I, 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 let's find out. Bang. Down he goes, picks it up. Jesus, I can't believe that. And I go, what has changed? What has changed is his beliefs, he, 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 uh -huh. his narrative towards what's going on. But you have to go a step further back again. How did he get to those narratives? Yes. And unfor unfortunately, it's the words he was told from either his first, I was going to say physio, but then I get blasted, from his physical therapist, physio, whatever. But even he, maybe, maybe he even hadn't been to the physio. He's having the chat with the guy on the side of the pitch watching the match. Yeah. Play, always, but the, lady down, the lady down the butchers told him, oh, that sounds like such and such. My sister had that. You must have that. And yeah, then they well, everyone has that. Everyone, everyone's, everyone's uh, 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 you know, I always say stop listening to people. Like a, a, a quick story, really quick. I had two, two, two females were coming in. I never knew they were sisters, and I was seeing them for two sessions each. But they were yeah. pretty close together. And I was like, going, and they were saying, one of them says, I'm going to walk with my sister tonight. She's going well with you as well. And I go, hold on a second. Are you such and such a sister? She goes, yeah. So do you go walking together? Yeah. Now, these two were complete catastrophe. Everything was negative, negative, negative about their pain. I go, okay. Rule number one, stop walking with each other for a solid week. Rule number two, join back walking in a two weeks' time, but no talk about pain. And I want to see you both back here in a month. Yeah. Guess what? Guess what? They came back and there was no pain. Because <laughs> every time they went for a walk, they were just reinforcing themselves how bad each other was. <laughs> and probably, probably going, no, I'm worse than you. No, I'm worse than you. It was a competition. It was a competition to see who's the worst. Or as my kids would say, it's who's worser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, and 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 again, yeah, the the words were, the words we use, and we could you could just make a throwaway comment with a patient or something, and no. they, they would leave, and again, that would that would put a complete change on that whole worker consultation that you'd done with them. Yeah, I, like I, I always said to my clients, I'm not really interested in what therapists or doctors done with you i'm interested in what they said you know and i, and I, and I want to know why and i want to know is there any truth to that and the yeah. only way we know is by challenging you know yeah. you'll never hear me say i'm right i'm right i always try to prove myself wrong and 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 therapists who have been on my course over the years you know they it the few of them they took a while you know they often said me at lunchtime you the way you work is is is, is wrong like i go yeah. okay but there and then, I'm challenging their beliefs. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at them, you know, and, and then I'll know, and I'll, I'll somewhat pick on them for a while, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden, it might click with them yeah. because, you know, yeah. that's just, we, we, we like to live in boxes. We like to live in boxes and mm -hmm. we, don't, don't, don't dare stay what, uh, what, where I'm living or what I believe in in the boxes is, 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 is incorrect or whatever. Yeah. I have no problem in, in, in people living boxes. Well, mm. make the box massive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> like you know, he, heel spurs, but be that heel spurs, knee pain, and just I, I saw one of the rugby dads, you know, that we know Mickey for years, and and and, and he phoned me up last Sunday, and uh, he, he, uh, it's got so bad now, and kind of chatting, yeah. you know, he's ended, he was two years of heel pain, the normal sort of thing, but he went to the GP uh, about a month or so ago, and again, we're not bashing GP, but the GP told him it was a spur, a lump of bone. Yeah. So Mickey's oh, convinced. Right, He's got a lump of bone, and uh, you know I, 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 we all know that whether there's a spur there or not, that's not the diagnosis of the thing. I, I you know, I, I don't think I've ever seen one that's been large enough to cause a, you know. And I've had patients with bone, 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 and even when you send them for an X-ray and they come back and there's no spurs, or they've got a bigger yeah. spur on the other one. Uh, yeah, there's, you know, there's no spurs. There. Are you sure? The doc said, the such and such said, I've read it online. It's all talks about spurs. Or as I say, but look, or they've got the non painful foot, but you've got a spur there, and it's the same size, and that's not sore. Or that yeah. one's bigger. And you're, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, and again, but he was, are you sure? He said, maybe he said it was a bit of gristle or something. You know, he's trying to, trying to justify it in his mind because I've challenged him. 
and well, there you go. You, whether it's there or not, that's not what's giving you the, uh, you know. The bit, no, it, it, no, it's only one part of it, you see. But what, what that, there's a classic example there, no, that doctor using the biomedical model. Yes. Using the biomedical model. The biomedical model, it doesn't stand on its own. It's, 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 it's pretty useless, to be honest with you, when it comes to treating, with, treating the person or interacting with the person is a better word to use. Mm -hmm. This is where the biosocial, biopsychosocial model kicks in. You know, the yeah. doctor, you know, when, third, when people go into doctors and they say, um, I'm not feeling well mentally, oh, I'll give you Xanax, you know, that, you know, medication straight away. And it's like, yeah. rather than sitting down and going, how's everything else going on? How, how's your diet? How, are you doing any exercise? How's work? How's things there? And how's family? Yeah. Now we're talking about the big picture, you know, and um, they just don't do it. They go, I'll give you Xanax and go on for a month. If you get worse, we'll increase it. Right. Mm -hmm. Talk better. And this is unfortunately what's happening. Um, like I've, I've said this loads of times, people should not go to doctors for a muscular skeletal problem. They just should not go to them. One, mm -hmm. they're wasting their time. And two, I don't think they're rightly qualified to give that guidance of sort. Mm -hmm. They are a medical doctor. Yes, they they can and they, they they can look at people, but I just think you or I are just more suited for that setup. Yes. Um, and we, we so in other words, if Mary goes to the doctor and he puts her on twelve weeks of pain medication for, for yeah. sciatica, and then she comes into me on the fourteenth week, and by the end of the fourteenth week, she's out walking, she's doing her gardening. So in one week, there's a big difference. She just has to waste in 12 weeks and being in pain because the doctor just gives her medication. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It blows my mind. And again, and again we're, you know, people will be listening to this in, in different countries and different health systems and things and different waiting lists. And we always get somebody that comes in and the, the, the issues get so bad, but they've got the surgeon, they've got the appointment of the surgeon and it's in another three or four months. And yeah. But, you know, and, and it's like, well, First of all, do you want surgery? No, yeah. no, I wouldn't want surgery. Well, you know, why are you having a surgical appointment? Because you're going to yeah. get a surgical opinion, which is yes, surgery or no surgery. You know, yeah. and again, again, and again, you know, that, 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 that appointment, which, you know, if somebody's lucky enough to live it somewhere, which, which are, they're speeded or they have health insurance and they have that. But if they're, you know, that have that waiting list. Well, first of all, you know, it's thank God I've got that thing, and that takes some pressure off them. But then, if the longer mm. they have to wait, and then they, and it's and, and it's the build up. I don't want to see the surgeon in six months, it's two months. And I can't wait to see him. You know that type of, and it's yeah. And it, but you want surgery? No, you know that's you've got to ask them what can I do for you today, and the surgeon's going to yeah. Yeah, but it, it, you're you're bang on. It's like I said. I said to people, if you don't want surgery, you know, um, come into me. And, I, and then the clients will say to you as well, it's like, I went to the doctor. And would you believe all he gave me was tablets? And I go, mm -hmm. hold on a second. Hold on a second. Number one, 90% or more of the times, again, nothing against doctors. That is all they can do for you. They yep. will prescribe. It's, doctors, are the doctors are gatekeepers. It's either refer or prescribe. That that is it, and I just say, well, what did you want? Did you did you did you want a massage off him? Well, I, you know, I thought he could do, do. No, no. What do you want off him? That's exactly his job description. So, and I always it, it gets me thinking. You know, doctors spend between six and ten years in in in, in, in school, right? Six and ten years in school, right? Yeah. In comes me <coughs> back in. The only thing he can do for me is give me drugs. Now I go into another good therapist. He can give me exercises, soft tissue, mobilization, advice. He can spend an hour with me. Wow, I just got a hell of a lot more from that guy than I did the doctor. And I'm feeling a hell of a lot better. Yeah. And again, 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 that of course is the, the system because I know we had practices within GP, very busy GP clinics. You know, they've got 10 minutes. That's all they're, yeah. they're, the volume that they've got to get through to, especially but, you know, yeah, yeah the, the, that, that, that's it. You, can't, you don't have the time. They don't have the capacity to go through that. Well, the, 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 the truth is they have the same time as us, but they just that's the way their profession is set up. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same as our, our, our you know, I, I know some amazing chiropractors, and you're not even on the table and you're off the table. That is mm -hmm. how it's set up. So to say they don't have time, I don't agree with it. 
they do have time. They just have to say, Justin is in a four, Ronnie's in a five, right? Are they going to get the same amount of money? No. But they okay. do have time. They do have time, but they just don't decide not but, to. But do of course, it. then again, I mean, I mean, I know in Ireland just GPs, they're, they're really difficult to recruit GPs, especially in, in Irish and rural areas and things like that. So, you know, the, the single handed guy working away in his own, you know, that, those are, you know, they're a damn sort of breed. That's the old family sort of GPs. It's yeah. called, they, you know, they, you know, they, 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 there's such a volume of numbers of people to, to get through. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But that's is what I, this is what I'm saying. Why are people going to doctors for musculoskeletal problems? They need because to... doctor knows best because that's what mum told you. Because that's why. Why do people go to the dentist in the six months check? Because when you have a toothache, the dentist. When you have yeah. a problem, the doctor. When you have a foot problem, the doctor. Yes, but and it's, also, it's, it's, it's also the person they trust the most. But uh, I forget the therapist's name, but he, he was talking on a podcast. And I was listening to him. And he goes, "If your if your client trusts you more than your than your doctor, you have done a great job as their therapist." Mm -hmm. So in other words, pe people text me and go, "This is what's going on with me. Do we need to go to the doctor?" And I go, "You know what? Yeah. Come on in. Let me check." And I'll loan a few minutes, and nearly all the time they don't need to go to the doctor. Yeah, because so, there's a certain age group of patient that that, yeah. that it's gospel. But, but, but like, absolutely, absolutely. But it goes back to education. It goes back to mm -hmm. giving the client the right information. This is what's going on. This, you know, if this happens again, don't, don't go rushing to the doctor. He, he, he's busy yeah. doing doing things. Mm -hmm. Give me a call. You know, I I can see you. We can spend an hour together. I can check in with you tomorrow. And they go, okay, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. about re-educating or you know, as you said, yeah. it's, it's what they used to do, but that needs to start changing. We as yeah. therapists need to start, need, we, we need to say, mm -hmm. right, rather than you go to the doctor, and I kind of, when people say to me, I, I had to go to the doctor, you know, and they're, they're with me, and I go, why did you go to the doctor? I just went because I felt I needed something medication-wise. Okay, mm -hmm. totally get that, N no problem. But did you go to get a second opinion, or did you go because, no, I just wanted to go and get medication. I got, that's a hundred percent, I totally get that. And they put the ring looking at me because now we go, now can you help me with my pain? Yeah. See the difference? Yes. There's a and big then, difference. And then Google. Yeah, Dr. Google. Dr. Google. <laughs> Why do you think? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I one guy, you know, we've all had it. Guy sitting in front of me, big ring of paper. I've got a perineal tumor. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it says here, look here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big problem. What big, do you big need me problem. For? Why are you here? Yeah, it's it's well, just it, but, before before I go before I head off, I just wanted to check. Oh, yeah, it, it's check this, yeah, check it, that. It, and it, it had turned out six months before they, they, they'd moved offices and he was sitting cross legged. All oh, right, compression, yeah, yeah, uh, right. But I've got a tumor, I, I think I'm gonna have to have a leg off. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you think I bet you a small little wager with you that that guy had very little trouble in, in his health throughout his life. And then something happens I'm like that, and it's like, this never happens to me. This never happens to me. Or then you get the other person who's, who's always injured. There's always stuff going on, and you're like, uh, you know, he's well used to it. So, again, it's all about people's, people's um, perception and what they think it is. Yeah. And so but they come in and tell you the diagnosis, and it's like, great, what, what can I help you for? You've already done my, you know, you've done the job for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me the money and have, get a cup of tea. Anyway, you know? <laughs> yeah, or one of the guys, one of the pediatric guys again on a talk because there's been lots of great, there's been lots of great online CPD and, and lots of things all, all with this and groups all over the all over the world. And one of the, one of the pediatric guys a week or two ago was talking about. I think it was like, yeah, Fiona on the Facebook group says, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. What they're, they're, they're what I call you know influencers. So we have to be so careful on who influences, you know, and I, I always listen to everyone. I listen to everyone, but I, I never, I never let, I never let, because I, I had a bit of a valuable lesson in that. I remember I was reading the Tom Myers book, Anatomy Trains, and he yeah. influenced me so much that I packed my bags and I headed over to him, you know, and, and I'll never forget it. He was, in, he was in the class and he goes, where are you from? And I said, Ireland. And he goes to me, <clears throat> excuse me, he goes, why are you here? You know, he says to me, and I says, yeah. I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn from you. And he goes, okay. 
hope you get something from it. And I was like, wow, he says to me, he says that to me. But Did you flown across the Atlantic to see him. And, and I was way, like at that, co- that entire course cost me over 40 grand. Like, and I was like going, wow, that guy says that to me. Now it turned out it was an amazing course. Would I recommend it? No, it's too much money. But um, it was still a phenomenal that, course. Before we run out of juice on this and we'll lose the whole recording, I've just got to go and get my cable and plug in. Okay. Where's the cable? That's the thing that I should go. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you, you know, pain, the heel pain discussion groups, the public ones that people have set up for, for, for heel pain sufferers themselves. Yeah, you should see some of the conversations on there. It's absolutely, I know. I stopped. See, um, I studied a lot of the pain stuff, as you know, and uh, I kind of moved away from all those because. Well, one, it was overload on me because I was, I was at work and I was listening to it and then I was coming home. But you kind of have to do the hours. You have to do the grind to learn that and, 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 and listen. Well, no, but this is, this, is, this, is people, this is people talking to each other about, oh, I'm scheduled for a plantar fascia release here and I had one that was great. And, oh, I, I tried these insoles here and they were fantastic. And yada, da, 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 da. And again, it's that whole sort of echo chamber of, reinforcing and what works and what doesn't and you know somebody was like i'm scheduled for this or uh, do you think these insoles would be good for me and again there's some people coming on going absolutely fantastic one thing other people come i mean there's so much yeah why and that was one of the videos i did ages ago the thing about the uh you know that we've got alan in the coffee shop alan you know what a biomechanical assessment is is that something you do with the car because the whole therapist, you know, they set up their websites and they have their business and it's all about the qualifications and the have and the long complicated words and the things and the, you know, it, you, you know it, 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 people aren't searching for that. They're searching for, mm. yeah, it's been, yeah, uh, so it, really, it, it, yeah, we could, we could, you know, as ever with all my guests, we could talk, we could keep going and going and going. It's, yeah. So, how can how can people find out more about you, Ronnie? Um, well, the, the 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 fascinating thing with me is that I have a YouTube channel, and not many people, you know, when I send down the link and they go, "Oh, yeah, you have a YouTube channel." I do, and on the YouTube channel, there's I don't know the exact figure, but there's over a hundred videos. Okay. Of it, different types of movements. If you like kettlebells, if you have a sore back, a sore neck, a sore whatever. It's all there on my YouTube channel. I'm, I have a Facebook page, Optimum Body. I'm always posting stuff on that. And I'm on Instagram as well. Yep. Uh, but I keep, I keep the more Instagram stuff for more of my training, more of my um, sprinting. So if you like, uh, I do put more videos up on that. Um, the Facebook yeah, page. You're, you're, you're competing. You're competing, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a master's sprinter, so um, I'm 41, so I, I, I run an M40s um, category, and um, so yeah, I, I love sprinting. That's why I want to hang up on you pretty quickly and go for training, because it's lovely out. <laughs> beautiful, yeah, beautiful outside, yeah. I've got to get out into the garden. And, yeah, it's, it's uh, and, and, and then, yeah, again, but as you say, the, the, you know, that psychosocial model, just Google it. It's there. There's, yeah, there's Google, no- Google the biopsychosocial model. It's 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 phenomenal and um yeah it's um it's something that you really need to dive into and there's a there's a very good um we talked about facebook page it's called explaining pain so yes, that's that's, that, that's very good i would advise people to go back a few years yeah. just go and back. i mean that's a great patient that's a great patient resource mm-hmm. as well fantastic fan- yeah. there's a lot of extremely smart guys on that and ladies obviously um, you know, doctors, neurologists, rheumatologists, they're, they're just there and they're all there to promote one thing, which is education. Um, yes, there's egos on it, but that's with every page. Um, you know, there's some amazing people out there doing amazing things. But I, I suppose as a therapist, if, you're, if you have never read Anthony on the biopsychosocial model, as I said earlier, <laughs> just, just give, 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 it a, give it a couple of years, learn it. It is the stand to you. It changed yeah, my just, life. Just, it's only, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's it's yeah, uh, yeah. Normally, as as ever, as ever, it's it's been a pleasure. It's been a okay, pleasure. Okay, buddy. Thank you very Talk much.
Take care, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So uh, yeah. thanks very much, everybody, for listening. Uh, you know, said Ronnie, uh, if you want to find out information from uh, uh, or, or how to get in contact with Ronnie, if you sort of missed that, uh, then let me uh, let me uh, let me know. And uh, as ever, until next time, thanks very much.